Right, now what you need to do is we need to texture the door frame. The best way to do this is select the face, one of the faces, click browse for a texture and type in door. Look for a door that you think is really nice and you like to use in your level. I'm going to choose this one. And you just right click in your level. You might have to align it. So what you do is you click bottom, left. And as you can see my texture is aligned. Now all I have to do is select that texture and then just paste it around. And then the door frame will fit in perfectly. And you do that for both sides. and then you texture the, the center as well you might have to click the center and then bottom there you go I will select the no draw texture after texturing if I don't then I'm going to forget and I'm going to create a brush with a horrible texture on that I'm just going to need to edit later <coughs> right now you're going to need to add a door use the entity tool on the left hand side and then on the right hand side there's objects type in prop underscore door underscore rotating and it should show up click on that and then place it where you want the door to be as you can see it's a red square what you want to do now is you want to double click the red square and you have the properties window open click on the world model and then click browse you will have this window pop up and it will have all of the models in the engine and the game you're going to make type in what you want in the filters you're going to need door and as you can see there are loads of different doors to choose from the most commonly used one is door 01 underscore left when you select that click OK and then click apply you don't need to go into much more in the flags and the properties click apply and then what you want to do is you want to align the model in the world you might need to change your grid size to grid 1 so it snaps perfectly in remember to rotate and then place it in so it's all nice and snug in there when rotating, um, when you first load up Source SDK, it won't be defaulted to 15 degrees. This can become a problem rotating and it won't snap to grid angles and it will be a nightmare to rotate objects. To change that, you click Tools, Options, 2D Views, and then click Default to 15 degree rotations tick the tech box, click apply, OK and then it will rot rota rotate anything you rotate in to 15 degree angles so it snaps on beautifully right when you put your door in the skin of it won't be the same as your door frame unless you chose the door frame skin the same as that to change the skin you double click on the door again the skin properties and you change the number from 1 to 2, 3, 4, 5 etc until you find skin that you like. Some models have multiple skins which is great like doors, force fields, that sort of stuff. Right. Once you find your skin you click apply and you close it and your skin is the right one for the door frame now. Right, now it's time to put on our ceiling. Make sure your grid is back to the grid you were using for your floors and walls. Select your floor by holding control, select both pieces of the floor. The selected 
items are lit up in red. Now what you want to do is you want to hold shift and drag and then you drag what up and then let go of the click then let go of shift. What this has done is it's copied the floor and put it as your ceiling. Then what you need to do is make sure you've still got these selected and then click apply current texture so it's all no drawed. Now you want to change the texture the same way as we textured the walls and the floor. Type in the filter seal for ceiling and then choose the texture you want for your ceiling. And then right click on the face that you want to texture. It'll only texture that face so don't worry. Now we need to put in an info player start so you can run around your level. It's where your person spawns. What you want to do is you want to click the entities tool, objects, and type in info underscore player underscore start. And then place him anywhere in the level. Rotate him as need be and place him in the level where you want him. I recommend making him 8 off the floor so he doesn't get stuck in the floor when he spawns and make sure he's not going into any walls or props now that, that now that he's in put some lights in your level use the entity tool, entity tool again type in the objects light select light and then just click in your level where you want the lights the standard lights that you put in are really bright. To change the brightness you double click on them and in the brightness properties you change it to something less. 200 is the max is not the max it's the what default change it to well because we only got a small room it only really needs to be 50 it can be less. To change the colour you just click pick colour and then choose it out of the colour palette Then do that for both your lights or all your lights that you've got in. Um, since it's a corridor, I'm going to put it as 20. Actually, 25, just around the safe side. Right now, your lights are in. Uh, we're going to more detail about lighting in a later tutorial. Uh, you want to add in some props. To add some props in, entities tool again. You want to create a table so prop underscore physics because the item we, the prop we're going to put in is a physics prop you place that using your camera anywhere in the level that you want now click on the selection tool and double click on the entity then find world model like you did with the door then click browse then type in desk or table or it's up to you I'm going to use this metal desk if you click the info on the right hand side underneath the view you'll see physics static it's, it will tell you what it can be so you can have it as a static prop or you can have it a physics prop double click on desk and then click apply and then you see desk spawning if you're going to place items on top of your desk it's recommended that you go into your flags then you click motion disabled if it's a physics object and disable generate output on use and then click apply that won't move at all now so it won't act like a physics object it will act like a static some objects require you to do that because they don't have a static version of the model once you've rotated it and put it where you want it lower the grid if need be to place it exactly where you want it once you've placed it in your level that's all you need to do with that now we're going to put a weapon and some ammo on the table use the entity tool type in weapon you've got all the weapons here from the game that you're using it'll be different for each game like Left 4 Dead 2, Portal, Half of Tips 2 since I'm using half of two episode two, I'm going to set the pistol. And I'm going to place it on the table. 
using using rotating and using all my windows to my advantage. And you place it over your table, rotating it way how you want it. You don't have to have it going into the table because when these spawn they'll be physics so they just drop straight onto the table. And then look for entities, type ammo, look for ammo underscore item underscore ammo underscore pistol. And then spawn it. You can hold shift when you've got an object selected, hold shift, click and drag and let go of the click, click and drag, let go of the click, click and drag and let go of the click. Never let go of alt before the click otherwise it will just move it. And now you can just rotate some how you want it. It's a lot easier to do it this way because then they're all at the same height. Once you've done that you're going to need to give your person a suit. So it shows your hood, like your health, your suit, armor, uh, your ammo, all that sort of stuff. You click the entities tool again, type in item, and score suit. I think you can get away with just typing suit. Once you've plunked it in, make sure it goes over your character. You can put it somewhere else in the room and you go pick it up, but if you want to spawn with your suit on, you put it inside your character so when you spawn you've automatically got the suit on then when you've done that you hit compile you hit you've got to compile your map so you go run map or you can press F9 then you click don't run game after compiling normal 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 disable HDR because it's only a test and then click OK you don't want to run the game after compiling so click that little tick box and click OK. It'll prompt. Sometimes it prompts you to save. I recommend saving regularly. Right, once it's compiled, it will show a copy to clipboard, and I'll just show you this in game. As you can see, I've got my half two episode two loaded because it's the game I made the map for. You want to enable the developer con you developer console. To do this, you click Options, Keyboard, Advanced, Enable Developer Console. Click OK, Apply, OK. Now hit your tilde key, which is just the button above the tab next to your one. Type in Map. And then the map name. Mine was tut01. Hit enter. When you spawn, you've got your suit, your props in, and your doors fully working. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please check back for more and subscribe to my page. Thank you very much.